way, for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over an example of a composite function. A composite function is basically just taking a second function and putting it into the first function. So the notation that you can see, there's two different notations. You can have what looks like fog, f of g, um, and it's read as f of g of x or f composed with g. You can read it either way. Um, but if you see this, this does not mean fog, even though that's what it looks like. Um, the open circle means a composite function. It does not mean to multiply. What it means to do is to take your g of x equation and replace all x's in your f equation with your g of x equation. For this, the domain is a set of all numbers x in the domain of g, such that g of x is in the domain of f. Um, basically, what you need to do is it's the domain of the input, whatever your g of x is, and the domain of the answer. That would be um, the domain of your composite function. So I will address that as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to look at, I have two functions. I'm going to do several different situations. Um, the first of which I am going to do f of g of x. Okay, so again what this means is that we're going to take into our f equation, we are going to replace all of our x values with our g of x equation. Okay, so with this, what we would do is wherever we have an x in our f equation, this tells me which equation I'm going to look at, I'm going to replace it with the g of x equation. So the 3, since it is a constant, stays the same. Instead of writing this x right here, I'm going to write 2 over x because I'm replacing my g of x equation in 4x in my f of x equation. And then I would just write the minus 1. So all I did was I replaced x in my f equation with my g of x expression. I cannot leave this like this because it is considered an improper fraction. So what we have to do to simplify is we have to find the lowest common denominator. So this one would be 2 over x minus 1. And so what we would need to do is essentially we're multiplying by 1, but I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x because x divided by x is just 1. And what happens is we're left with 3x in the numerator. In the denominator, these x's cancel out, so I'm left with 2 minus 1 times x, which is just x. So this would be the composite function. This would be my final answer, 3x over 2 minus x, because it is the simplified form of this expression right here. As far as the domain goes, remember that the domain is the domain of the input. So the domain of this one is that x cannot equal 0. So it's the domain of this one and the domain of my answer. So for this one, because we cannot have the denominator equal to 0, we would say that x cannot equal 2 because 2 minus 2 would give me 0. So the domain for this composite function is all values of x such that x cannot equal 0 because it was not in the original function that I plug in, plugged in and x cannot equal 2. Okay. Um, if you wanted to write that in interval notation, I'm, for this one I'm going to write it in both set and interval. Moving forward, I'm just going to do it in set notation. So for interval notation, this would be negative infinity up to 0, not including the 0, 0 to 2, not including 0 or 2, and then from 2 to positive infinity. So this is the interval notation. Okay, so for this, because of the fact that I don't have a lot of space and you can't see what it is, I'm going to go ahead and write f of x and g of x again. So f of x, remember, is 3 over x minus 1. And g of x, remember, is 2 over x. So the next thing that I'm going to look at is what happens if they ask me to find g of f of x. 
So you can also go the opposite way. So for this one, this is saying into my G equation, wherever I have an X, I am going to replace it with the F of X equation. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna do the exact opposite. So wherever I have an X in my G equation, I am going to replace it with this expression. So I'm essentially going to take this X right here and replace it with my f of x equation. So I'm gonna take the two is gonna stay the same and instead of writing x, I'm going to write three over x minus one. Again, I have a complex fraction which I can't leave it as this. So in order to get rid of the denominator, what I'm going to have to do is multiply both the top and the bottom by x minus one. If I multiply this, it's essentially multiplying by one because this is just multiplying by one, okay? The x minus one in the denominator cancels out and on the top, I end up with g of f of x is equal to two x minus two, if I distribute on the top, over three. So this would be my final answer. Notice how much different f of, like if we go back up here to our answer, this was f of g of x was 3x over 2 minus x. g of f of x is 2x minus 2 over 3. It's a very different answer. So you do have to be careful because um, g of f of x is not always equal to f of g of x. Okay, so be very careful about how it is written. As far as the domain goes, and once again, I'm just gonna write this in set notation. As far as the domain goes, this time we have to look at what we plugged in. So since we plugged in f of x, we have to find the domain of f of x, so x cannot equal one. Okay, we also have to look at the domain of the answer. Well, there are no restrictions on this one because I do not have x in the denominator. So for this one, the domain is just x cannot equal one, okay? Um, I wanna look at one more situation just so that you know what to do. Um, the last situation that I wanna look at, let me go ahead and write my equations again so that you can see them. I'm still using the same equations, okay? I'm still using that f of x equals three over x minus one, and g of x equals two over x. But for this one, what I wanna do is I want to find f of f of x. So I want to compose um, f into f. So for this one, what it's saying is I am going to take my entire f of x equation, this entire part here, and I'm going to replace my x term with that, okay? So you can compose an equation onto itself. So you can compose um, an equation with it, or a function with itself. So what I would do is I'm gonna take the original function, the three, and I'm going to replace the x with the entire f of x equation, x minus one, minus one. So all I did was I took the entire part here, this whole part here, and instead of writing x, I replaced x with three x minus one, okay? I do have to do the same thing that I've done on the last ones because I have an improper fraction or a complex fraction. I cannot leave this um, the way that it is. It is not the correct notation. So what I would do is I would keep the three over x minus one minus one and I'm gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the denominator of the denominator, which is x minus one. And that way, when I distribute this in, I'm gonna distribute this whole thing in to both of these. Um, on the top, I would end up with three x minus three. In the denominator, my x minus one cancels on the first part, so I would be left with three. I have to distribute this negative one in, so I would have negative x plus one. 
So my final answer would be 3x minus 3 over 4 minus x. And I'm going to leave it like this um, because of the fact that, remember, unless the groups are exactly the same, you cannot simplify it. Or if it's just multiplying, you can simplify. Um, but because these are differing groups, I cannot cancel these x's out because groups are more important than division. Okay, so as far as the domain goes, remember that the domain is the domain of what you plugged in. So for this one, we plugged in f of x, so we know that x cannot equal 1. Okay, and the domain of my final answer. So for the final answer, x cannot equal 4 because 4 minus 4 would give me 0. 1 minus 1 would give me 0. So we would say x such that x cannot equal 1 or, and you can just put a comma in there too, x cannot equal 4. Okay, um, you could also write this in interval notation. So it would be from everything from negative infinity to 1. So I'll go ahead and write this last one in interval notation just to recap. Um, so we would have everything from negative infinity up to 1. And I don't know why I put a set bracket. Okay, so negative infinity to 1. Okay, or, and I almost put the and symbol. My brain doesn't want to think anymore. 1 to 4, or from 4 to infinity. So when it starts looking like this and you have excluded values, sometimes the interval notation looks more confusing because a lot of people read this as well, doesn't it? Isn't it just negative infinity to infinity? Remember that the parenthesis does not include those values, so we are excluding 1 and we are excluding 4. As always, thanks for watching. If you have questions, please let me know.